you just gotta want it real bad. <laughs> hey everyone, I'm Leanne. If you don't know me, if you do and you're back, thank you so much. I'm happy to have you. Today is tanning day. Welcome to my natural skin tone because I don't think you've ever seen it on my channel because I am a self-tanning, fake tan, addict. It's basically my religion at this point. I do it every single week without fail. It is so rare for me to miss it. And when I miss it, I miss it. I hate self tanning. Like the process is so annoying, but there is nothing like a fake tan. Once I actually have it done, there's nothing more transforming like mascara, concealer, like forget it. I want a fake tan. That's just how it is. And I like to do it at home. I like to DIY and I'm gonna show you my whole routine today. Actually, one of the first things that brought me to YouTube, even before I started my channel, I was just a bored person and I was looking up like reviews, tips, tricks, advice, anything I could find about self tanning because I've always loved to be a tan person. But when I was about like 19, I found out that I have subacute cutaneous lupus, so I can't really be out in the sun. So that's a whole other story, but that's what really sparked my love for self tanning and kind of YouTube. So here we are, full circle, baby. Anyway, like I said, I'm gonna share everything with you guys. I'm gonna show you all the steps, everything I do from start to finish. Like I said, I do this about once a week. I mean, obviously this doesn't have anything to do with you, but I'm just letting you know, this is how I schedule my life, literally around my self tanner. It's too much. Okay, let's just get into it. All right, I backed up a little bit. I want you guys to see the before situation a little bit I know you are not well acquainted with my natural skin tone I am pretty pale I'm not the fairest of the fair but I'm pretty pale and I just wanted you to get a good look at it so you can compare it to where I'll be at the end okay step one is all about prepping your skin trust me if you didn't have to prep your skin, I would not tell you to. I am not trying to waste your time. I'm not trying to waste my time. Unfortunately, you gotta do it. You've got to exfoliate and if you shave, if you shave your legs, it's a good idea to shave your legs beforehand. So I exfoliate my entire body, I shave my legs, I get all of that clean, smooth, fresh and ready to apply the tan. You exfoliate because your skin naturally sheds off and if you had a tan previously, you wanna get all the old stuff off and ready for new stuff. And you're trying to just kinda of have like an even canvas where there's no extra dry skin everywhere so the tan can go on evenly and actually have a chance to stick to your skin for as long as it possibly can. My favorite way to exfoliate is to use scrubby gloves like these. Now I got these from Target, but I've seen them at Ulta, I've seen them at Walgreens, I'm sure that Walmart, Ulta, all kinds of places. And honestly, I probably need to get new ones. These look like they've been through something terrible. They are not created equally, I will say that. There are ones that are a lot smoother and not as coarse and rough. I like the ones that are really coarse and rough because I'm not trying to scrub for forever and ever and ever. I scrub like there's no tomorrow, but I wanna get it done fast. And I always use these. I don't really use any kind of like exfoliating scrub, salt scrub, sugar scrub, anything like that. I just use my regular body soap in the shower. This is Dr. Bronner's. And I just go to town scrubbing because the more you scrub and the more you get your skin ready, the better your tan is going to last. Should I wear these for the remainder of the video? Give them that old razzle dazzle. Okay. Anyway, I've heard before that it's a good idea to shave and exfoliate the day before you self tan. I've done it that way, but I've also done it day of. It all just depends on my schedule. Sometimes I can't spread it out like that. And I honestly don't see much of a difference. So do whatever works for you. But moving on to step two, if you just exfoliate your skin and you're getting out of the shower, you just dry off and you don't add any moisturizer. If you have exfoliated and shaved the day before and you might still have like moisturizer on your skin or something, hop in the shower, wash all of that off. You want to start with a clean, dry canvas. You don't want anything on your skin anywhere because that self tan needs to get right onto your skin with nothing blocking it. However, you do need a really good, nice, thick moisturizer on hand so that you can cover your feet and your hands because your hands and your feet, they take self tanner in a whole different way. If you've done self tans before and you didn't know what you're doing, you put it all over your hands and feet, just like you do the rest of your body. You know what I'm talking about? It is a bad situation. I've been there 
you might have been there. We don't ever want to go there again. So this is why we do this step. You get your really good, nice, thick moisturizer. I either use the Palmer's Stretch Mark Lotion or I use the Aveeno Skin Relief Overnight Cream. These are two lotions that I really like even when I'm not doing my tanning routine, so I always have them around. You just want to spread this on really thick over your whole foot and your whole hands all the way up to your wrists and your ankles. Some people would also say to go over your elbows and your knees because the self tanner can really grab onto those areas as well. You know your skin better than I do. You can do that if you need to do that, but I personally don't. All right, step three, we're finally here. It's been a long road, but it's finally time to actually apply the tan. One of the things that I almost always use when I'm putting on my tan are plastic gloves. I don't see people using these a lot, but they're amazing because they just protect your hands. And I use a mitt like this. It is actually lined with plastic on the inside, so it does provide a lot of protection for your hands, but sometimes, I don't know how, it still will seep through. It's a mess, you don't want that. So it really helps to use those plastic gloves. This mitt is from Tarte. I love this mitt. I've tried so many different brands mitts and I swear they are so cheap, they are so horrible. I can't even understand how some of these brands actually sleep at night selling mitts like they do because they fall apart almost instantly. But this one actually holds up and it works really, really well. And it spreads the product out, it buffs it on, and it works. I mean, it does the job. So that makes me happy. And the actual self tanner that I'm gonna use today is the Saint Tropez Self Tan Express. I really am not totally loyal with my self tanners. I like to try a whole bunch of different things. If there's something new and it's interesting to me, I want to try it. But this is one that I've used a million times. I've repurchased it over and over and over again. You can get it from Ulta, you can get it online, you can get it on Amazon, it's very accessible. But what I really, really, really love about this one is not only I like the color and I like how it wears throughout the week, but more than anything, it is an express self tanning mousse. So on here it says, if you leave it on for one hour, you get a light tan two hours medium, three hours dark. I almost always leave it on for three hours or more. It all just depends on what I'm doing through the day. But I don't like to leave self tanner on my skin for eight hours plus. I don't like to sleep in a self tanner and that's what you have to do with most self tanners. Self tanner just feels icky on my skin and if I can get it off faster, I want to. So I almost always go for self tanners that you only have to leave on for a limited number of hours. It doesn't get darker and darker and darker if you leave it on over three hours, so don't worry about that. I really like the color of this one. I really like how it develops. It spreads on my skin really nice. I like it overall, but really, I wanna get this stuff off of my skin as soon as I can, so that's why I keep going back to this one. All right, I feel like I've explained everything to death, so let's just go ahead, get this party started, and slap some of this on my skin. Okay, I don't know if you can see this from this far away, but I'll just tell you what the situation is so you don't like fear for my safety. I have this crazy bruise right here, and that's because I got a bunch of blood drawn about a week ago. This has been here for a week. I am so ready for it to be gone. But the great thing about self tanning, like if you have bruises or little marks on your legs or whatever, self tanning, it covers many flaws. It will hide many sins. And I am so grateful for that because Easter Sunday is coming up. I have a cute dress and it doesn't really match with a bruise. So here we go. I've got my gloves on, I've got my mitt on, and I'm gonna go ahead and grab my tanner. So for each part of my body, I like to do pretty much two to three pumps of self tanner. Comes out like this, very delicious looking. And the first part that I usually do is my neck and my chest and the back of my neck and the top of my back. So one part that is a little bit tricky to do, and you really have to remember this because you do wanna work kind of fast to spread this out as quickly as you can and buff it in as evenly as you can is right here along my jawline. Sometimes I'll like kind of go like this and I end up getting it a little too high up on my jawline. And then when I'm just relaxing normally, the line of the self tanner is kind of up right here. And Grant's noticed it before, like before I've actually rinsed it off and he's like, is it gonna stay like that? And luckily it doesn't stay like that, but that's something that you kind of want to avoid because if you're careful, you can kind of enhance your contour. I don't have the strongest jawline ever. I wish I did, but I don't. 
And so if you're careful, you can kind of do a little like self tanning contouring around your jawline, but you do have to be mindful of it and really look in the mirror and try to relax when you're doing it. I might've kind of messed that up because I was talking to you guys, but that's a place over time that I figured out I have to be really careful with. This is so tricky to do with clothes on. I did not think this through. So one of the biggest questions of all time with self tanner is how do you do your back? I'm almost always alone when I'm doing my self tanner. I don't usually have an assistant. I don't have anybody else in the house. Luna will not do my self tan for me. I've tried to teach her, it doesn't work. So basically, I just have to try to be very flexible. And to be completely honest with you, sometimes I have spots where I don't have self tanner. And you know what? It's on my back. I can't see back there. I don't care. But I basically just push my elbow back to try to reach every part of my back that I can get to. I switch my hands on the mitt because you can actually reach a lot further back and reach a lot more of your back just by pushing your elbow back a little bit and really reaching. You just gotta want it real bad. <laughs> All right, so moving on to my arms, I get three pumps and I start off on my forearm. I do the top of my forearm and then I move it up to the top of my upper arm, I don't know. And I start to buff it in in circular motions and then I buff it towards the inside of my arm and I really keep it up here in this zone. I don't get closer to the wrist. I really wanna buff all of the arm in before I get close to the wrist because the wrist can be a very harsh line and you don't want that. So you wanna spread the product around as much as you possibly can to really disperse it before you start blending down towards your hand because you want it to be a nice fade. You don't want it to be a harsh line. And this is something, it just takes a little bit of time. You really wanna make sure you're going over everything two, three times. You really wanna buff it in. And that color guard does help. You can see the tint on my arm already and that helps you see where you've got it and where you don't, but don't trust it all the way. You really just gotta go over it and over it and over it, and then you'll really know you've got it blended in. Now it's time for the other arm, and I do it just the same way. Kind of focus on the top, and then blend it all the way around. Don't really focus a lot of product on your elbow. Like I said, the elbow can take self-tanner in a very weird, upsetting way. It can get really dark really fast for no good reason. So you don't really wanna go over it with a whole bunch of product. I don't really go over my armpit with self tanner one time i think it's the first time i ever got a spray tan it was like an airbrush fake tan and they went over my armpits and later that day my armpits turned green and it kind of like scarred me and i was like mm, probably don't want to go over my armpits with self tanner okay obviously when i'm actually tanning it looks a little bit different than this i'm naked i'm not wearing like an outfit i do my whole body is that too much information just you wait there will be too much information in a little bit so when I'm doing my stomach, I just basically do it like this. There's really not a lot to see here. More than anything, you're just wanting to go in circles to really blend it in everywhere. All right, so now I move on to my legs. So I got three pumps on my mitt. I kind of dot it on the top of my leg, on the bottom of my leg, on both sides. So I kind of disperse the product before I start to buff it in. And I go all around my thigh and then with whatever product is left on my mitt, I go over my knee, on the sides of my knees, but I never go over my knees with a lot of product on my mitt. That is a big mistake. You could definitely already see a difference with these thighs. Oh baby. Okay, so moving down to my calf and my shin, I'm only using two pumps, and I start at the back of my calf, and I go towards the front, and I just buff it in all around my leg. And again, I really focus on blending, blending, blending until there's hardly any product on my mitt and then I go down towards the ankle. But you really wanna be super, super cautious once you get down to that ankle because that is the danger zone. All right, moving on to my other leg. We got three pumps, dot, 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 blend it in. Two pumps. 
So now that I have self tanner all over my body, I still have my hands and feet to deal with. I don't like to use the mitt on my hands or my feet. I just think it's a very unpredictable application. So I like to use a makeup brush. This is a synthetic makeup brush. The brand is Tweezerman. Honestly, you can use whatever you've got that you're not really using for makeup. I use just a tiny, tiny bit of my self tanner. I pump it kind of like a quarter pump of self tanner onto the brush. Generally, I'm just going for a less is more approach and I spread it on the top of my foot first. Then I blend down to my toes, the sides of my feet, my ankles, and I meet it up to where I stopped with the mitt on my leg. All right, now it's off with my gloves and I'm ready to work on my hands. The hands are definitely another difficult spot to work on and so I use the brush and again, only a tiny bit on my brush and if I need to add more, I'll add more, but you don't wanna go in with too much product. Tiny bit, kind of stipple it on. And then I go down on my fingers and I bend my knuckles like that because if you're going like that, Sometimes you'll have lines where the wrinkles are. Go around and join it all together. Okay, now as for my face, I have gone in and just used my regular self tanner on my face. I like to kind of focus it on the areas where I would normally contour. You can also just do your entire face, that's fine, but it fades off really, really fast, or at least it does for me. And then I have a ghostly face next to a very tan body, and that's okay, that's fine, that's what bronzer is for. But what I've recently been using a whole lot more are these self-tanning drops. This is the Isle of Paradise Dark Self-Tanning Drops, and I mix it in with my regular everyday moisturizer. I don't use it every day, but when I'm feeling like I want a little extra color on my face, I use this at night. You put it on your face, you wash your hands, you gotta wash your hands afterward, and it just gives you a nice light bit of color on your face. It says dark. It doesn't ever make me feel like I've gone with a dark self tanner on my face. It just kind of like makes up the difference a little bit. It makes you feel like you kind of match a little bit better, especially for no makeup days. It helps. Step four is just to let your tan develop and this takes time. It is unfortunate, but true. You just have to let it sit on your skin completely undisturbed. So you want to avoid sweating. You want to avoid water. Like water is lava. Do not touch it. So you've got to wash the dog, make some pasta, go to your swim class go to the sauna, like just get out of your system because you have to be like a desert human being. For me personally, I'm gonna do like three or four hours, but like I said, I was gonna give you an extra personal note about me. My special little secret is that for the first 30 minutes to an hour, I don't put on any clothes. If nobody's coming over, if I'm just at the house, like if you don't have to put on any clothes, like why do it, you know what I mean? I feel like it lets it soak into your skin completely undisturbed really, really nicely. I used to have this terrible habit of leaving self tanner to the very last thing I needed to do at night and then I'd get right into bed right after I had done it and it wouldn't be dry on my skin. Self tanner tends to stay tacky the whole time that you have it on your skin. I mean, eventually it will soak in, but it's still tacky. And if you get right into bed or if you put clothes on directly, it's gonna kind of soak some of the product off of your skin and you don't want that. When I was doing that, you could always see there'd be like a line on the back of my legs of where it was darker and where it was lighter because the skin that was right up against my bed sheets it would kind of get the self tanner soaked off of it. And that was a bad time in my life. I kept noticing that and I'm like, why is this happening? Like, why do I have like a half and half leg? Like, what is the meaning of this? And I finally figured out it's because I was hopping right in bed. So now I am extra, extra, extra high maintenance and I kind of frolic around for about 30 minutes to an hour in the nude. I can't believe I'm telling you this, but honestly, I think it helps. And if you have something special coming up, if you wanna be like really evenly tanned all over, it's worth a try. If you've got the time, if you've got the privacy, 
why not do it? That's what I do when I have the time, but after about a half an hour to an hour, I'll put on my clothes and go about my life and be like a normal functioning human <laughs> as much as I can be. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish up all these areas I've missed. I feel like I would not be very happy with my results if I didn't do that. And then I'm gonna go about my life and I'm gonna let my tan develop for about four hours and then I'm gonna rinse it off. That is step five, rinsing off the tan. Definitely go by the directions on your self tanner but when you hop in the shower to rinse off your tan do not use soap you're really just rinsing that product off your skin you're rinsing off the tent but in my experience the tan definitely still develops even after you've rinsed it off I always feel like my tan looks the best maybe like 12 to 24 hours after I've done it so for example if you have your wedding and you want to self tan before your wedding you want to do it the day before your wedding in the morning so you have a lot of time for it to really develop into its deepest, darkest, prettiest color. I wouldn't even say do it the night before. I like to do it with good time in advance. Oof. I feel like I could write a book on this topic. I have talked for so long, I'm tired. So I got work to do, but I will see you tomorrow morning and I will show you the final result. All right, I'm back. It is the morning and obviously things have changed. My tan has developed. The light is a little bit different, so I really hope you can tell what's going on. I feel like I'm a little bit darker than I normally am just because I pretty much ended up going in with two coats because I went over all the places that I missed whenever I was doing my tan with you guys and then ended up kind of just going over my whole body again. It's not what I normally do, but it's totally something that you can do if you really want to get that like deep dark color right away. It works and I think it looks good. I just usually don't take the time. There is one tip that I forgot to mention yesterday, but it is really important. When you rinse off your tan after it's been developing for however many hours, you need to make sure you use a really good moisturizer on your whole body right after that shower. You wanna avoid your skin drying out at all costs the whole time you have your tan on because staying moisturized really prolongs the life of your tan. I mean, this is a lot of trouble to go through. Just put some moisturizer on. Okay, obviously I feel like this goes without saying, but if you're a pale girl, you can embrace that. I'm not trying to say anybody needs a tan to be beautiful. That is not a thing. It's just what I like and it's just what I do slash it's just what I'm addicted to. People actually ask me to do this. So that's why I'm doing it. I'm definitely not saying this is beautiful. This is not like no way. Okay, I feel like all that goes without saying to so just ignore me. I really appreciate you guys watching. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, if you enjoyed it. I feel like it helps my channel, helps my video reach more people. I really, really appreciate when you guys like my videos. Definitely leave me a comment if you have a request for a new video. You can also subscribe if you're not subscribed, hit the bell for notifications. And I'm at Leanne Says everywhere on all my social medias and I love hearing from you guys over there. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye everyone. Felt like a, a cheerleader move. Okay. This tripod is gonna fall over any second. But my super extra special, it's so awkward to stand and record videos. Hey guys, what's up? I don't have enough room in here.